Right, we're back with the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. A very interesting conversations ahead. Um, uh, we've been looking at and expecting, of course, the relevant political parties to file their petitions. And, of course, candidate of the People's Democratic Party, a presidential candidate that is in the just concluded 2023 presidential election, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar has uh, finally filed his petition uh, to challenge the declaration of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress as the winner of the presidential election that was held on the 25th of February 2023. Atiku in the petition marked the CAPEPC 05 2023, uh, which he uh, lodged before the presidential elections petition court, sitting at the Abuja division of the Court of Appeal, applied for the withdrawal of the certificate of return that was issued to Tirubu by uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission. He maintained that the declaration of Tinubu as a winner of the presidential election was invalid by reason of non-compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act. Atiku, uh, through his team of lawyers led by Joe Carey, Gazama, SEN, uh, further argued that Tinubu's election was invalid by reason of corrupt practices. Uh, he prayed the court to declare him winner uh, of the presidential election, having secured the second highest number of lawful votes cast at that election. Recall that Labour Party and its presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, had Monday night also filed a petition before the court uh, to vote the declaration of Tinubu as the president-elect. Um, joining us to provide some context and background to this is uh, public affairs analyst and politician, Upunabo Nkotaria. Upunabo Nkotaria, thank you very much for your time. Good morning, Toby. I, I can't see Mercy. Is she there with you? Yes, she, she's here. Mercy is here as well. Um, uh, what info Good morning, the... Mercy. Good morning, uh, in Kotaria. It's good to have you join us. Well, what inf you. Thank you, brother. What informs the uh, focus of the article petition, not on the number of votes cast from what we've seen, but on the um, uh, fit, fitness and properness of... Uh, uh, Paul Atinubu to be president of Nigeria. He's quoted the Electoral Act and also talked about corrupt practices. Um, a bit of uh, borrowing from what the Labour Party and its candidate um, uh, had as grounds for its petition and prayer uh, in that petition. What informs that focus on the, the person of Tinubu and his antecedent, not the results itself? Well, Kofi... Honestly, I don't, I'm not really comfortable with on the phone uh, interview on issues like this. But if you give me just two minutes, let me get this in ready. Okay, all right. Is that good? Okay. Can you? That's Th fine. Can you, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I think we will just take a, a break and... Just, uh, two, just a minute. Just yes, a minute. yes, no, no problem. But um, um, <laughs> it's an interesting situation. Uh, because I remember, Mercy, at some point, the uh, Labour Party and its presidential candidate uh, appeared on a television program and said they were challenging uh, not the results of the election, but the 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 conduct of the conduct of the process. Yes, and then later to come out on Twitter to clarify that he's challenging both the process and the declare the, 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 the out the declaration. You know, but it wasn't too clear, but. With this uh, um, Labour Party petition, we've seen that quite clearly they are, they are challenging um, the, the results and that um, they are saying they also won the most votes and had the most votes in the election. They are actually challenging the results and also going ahead to, um, to say that the, the president-elect um, is not qualified even to contest by uh, the, uh, the conditions stated in the Nigerian constitution. Um, they've also talked about the fact that he didn't win um, the FCT, 25% uh, of, and may, you know, looking at um, Section 134 of the Nigerian Constitution and Federal Republic of Nigeria has amended. And looking at um, a corruption case or uh, alleged uh, narcotics case he had in the United States of America. And if you look at that, of course, we can look at Section 137 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has amended. Um, we're not here to look at whether uh, uh, Article is, is president or be his president, or Tinubu lost, or didn't even know. But he had to find, look at the background of this, um, what the prayers are, okay, 
looking at the grounds and then basically looking at the possibility of how the case can play out mm -hmm. but not not looking at who is um guilty and just looking at basically the characters so the, 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 the characters involved because we're aware that in 2019 uh tiko abubakar uh, also approached the court uh challenging the victory of buhari and lost you know so uh, i don't know if it's going to be third time lucky for him <laughs> Well, um, I mean, it, it's quite dicey. First of all, it's a very sensitive issue. And uh, in most, I mean, you also want to agree that it's sub judice, especially when it's been, uh, you know, in, in front of uh, a court or a tribunal, however you want to look at it. But, you know, some of the issues are of real concern. Now, one of them that's been talked about, because even prior to when the results were being put out, uh, you talk about the issue of whoever becomes whoever has been declared president has to win, uh, you know, uh, to third, of course, uh, 24 states, including the AFCT. And so the contention, the bone of contention, you know, we remember very well that this is also the issue of uh, 25, 24 states winning 25%, including the AFCT, has been a bone of contention over time. That particular conversation, uh, a lot of people have talked about it, whether or not the FCT, before this election, whether the FCT is a state or should be treated as a state. And so there's a lot of twist and in interpretation. But if you look at the Constitution, this is not me trying to interpret it, but it's just making reference to it, what has been, what is, and we don't know how the interpretation actually works. But um, the part of that Constitution, shadow one of it, uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria has amended, list out what the states in Nigeria are, their local government, and the schedule also provides for 36 states, right? Uh, the FCT is not mentioned as a state by the literal interpretation, which is the best way of interpreting it, because uh, that part of the constitution just talks about, you know, the states, 36, and then it went on, you know, to talk about the FCT. So the status of the FCT is provided for in the schedule of it, but one, uh, that particular part two, where you talk about the federal capital territory was Abuja. So um, when you look at that, just the part that you have mentioned, uh, it should be treated like. Yeah, but, you know, we, we, as you said, you know, we don't want to go into saying uh, whether the, which, whether the party, the petitioning party is right uh, or, wrong. or wrong. Yes, we don't, you know, to, to go into that. So, but just like, just like I have stated, that, um, you know, this is very, very dicey and uh, sensitive, you know, conversations to have probably looking at the background, you know, to all of this. But we'll just quickly take a break. And when we return, we will be joining Okunabo Nkotari right here. Please stay with us. All right, we're back. Uh, time to uh, continue our conversation. Of course, uh, Open Abongo Sarah is still starting by. So we had to take a little break so that uh, we could uh, have a proper view of Miss Nkotari. Nkotari, thank you very much for your time. Um, I was asking for what you, your... Yeah, yes. Uh, of course, like you know, uh, there are certain legal um, boundaries uh, which we will not cross, you know, today. You're very well aware of that. <laughs> but um, um, what do you think informs the fact that uh, the uh, article legal team is focusing basically on the Electoral Act and some certain provisions of the Act that it feels um, means that uh, uh, the person of Asiwa Jutiunubu, presidential can president elect on the candidate of the APC, it was not qualified to be in that election. Uh, those are the major things that, that the Article Legal Team is focusing on, uh, more than just the result. You know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, first and foremost, when you go to court, you think of the most potent tool to use. And I believe that the lawyers, excuse me, the lawyers would have analyzed, you know, everything and come to a conclusion. Because you just have to be qualified to contest in accordance with the electoral act of the Constitution. So if you're not qualified to contest, even if your victory is valid, you are, you are not a candidate within the cognizance of the law. You are not a candidate. So, if at all, Donald Tinubu violated any of the electoral, any part of the electoral act, or even the constitution, then definitely in terms of qualification, now we are not talking of the votes, then Bola and Tinubu have been issued who ought not to even be in the race. And if actually ought not to be in the race, then 
the second person, the person who came second in that ballot, automatically becomes the winner. Because it simply means that he was not a participant in the last presidential election. So if they have facts, it will bolster that assertion that he was never qualified based on certain variables to be in that election. Of course, they are going to exploit that. Of course, they are also not going to exclude the issue of the violence, the rigging that characterized the polls. But maybe the lawyers have seen that the man ought not to be in that, in that ballot. And so that is what they are pursuing to go to. But you see, you cannot, I would say, divorce just one aspect and concentrate on that. Because even if you go, maybe the last two are not very sure of the judiciary. I'm not speaking for them, but they are also not sure because in recent times, the judiciary has performed, especially the Supreme Court, has performed abysmally to the point that Nigerians have lost faith, lost faith in our judiciary. And I keep saying this, no matter how they deny it, we have the issue of Lawan, we have the issue of Afabio. We have the, a lot of a lot of issues. Even the Imo State Governor, the governor, judiciary gave him more votes than he even went to court to contest. Judiciary became a fabricator, gave him more votes. It had so many cases like that. Are you talking about the reverse case of Road to Nitin Nikita as far back as 2007? Where the judiciary said you vote for individual parties that are not individual. And I questioned it as far back as, in fact, I was on your former program, Kofi, if you remember, in Portaco, and we discussed that extensively. And I said, it is so ridiculous that you say you vote for the party and not the individual. Now, what has happened? When people move from party A to party B, you find out that they move with their loyalty. So you cannot come and tell me you voted for the party and not the individual. But why? Because they were compromised. That's the truth about it. They were compromised. And looking for how to bring the road to the civic community as a government. So I, that loss of confidence in the judiciary is probably why they are exploiting the issue of, um, um, how would I put it now, uh, uh, ability to contest. But there was a particular word I was thinking, you know. Qualification. That's why they are looking for the qualification. But they will not, in any way, abandon the issue of rigging, togri that characterized the election. Of course, that was not democracy on that day. We didn't have democracy. Nobody can come and tell you that. That was a coup covered up with niceties and complexities. It wasn't democracy. It wasn't vote. That election was it was than more than we did. So we shouldn't even talk about democracy. What we should talk about was a coup against the river state. Thousand democracy. Did anybody who explains that to living tell you? Look at the beavers. About 17 or 24 beavers were stolen. Returned about how many? 72 or 74 hours later. So if the results, if the beavers were stolen and the electoral act made it mandatory for you to cross check whatever result you have with the beaver and upload, how did they do the cross check? So well, if, the, if those Democrats were stolen, what would INEC would have suspended the election at that point? But they went ahead because GDM, my mother, I think calling it. You see, when you're to an extent good, you become like sweet in the mouth of people. But when you're bitter, you know, you, you, they spit you out. Mahmoud Yakubu was compromised. Nobody talk about machine. Nobody come and tell me that rubbish, stupid excuse of machine. There's nothing wrong with the Democrats. You were able to upload National Assembly election results. On the same day, the National Assembly was, uh, as an uh, election, was, we, we are conducted on the same day, simultaneously, not to make the same, simultaneously with the presidential election. All of a sudden, the viewers stopped working. Even the, the server, everything went bad. You remember the Buaris administration in 2019, when they went to court? Was it 2019 or 2020? Yeah, 2019. I think we won that election. They went to court. I said this before. 
when the same Supreme Court said, Evan Zewere and Evan Zewere, most of you are very young there. The problem he had was S. That was added to his name, Evan and Evan. It could make, even on your station, most times you put Obunabo, which is arrow, after the Obunabo. And I said, no, you delete the arrow. So now you see Obunabo arrow on my uh, 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 name, my certificate, and you say, no, this is not a sign. Because of that, the former Senate president, Evan Severin, was removed. His certificate was withdrawn. Now, when it was time for Buhari, after allocating billions to get the server and so on, they went to court because they actually went. They went to court. But, the but, court said but, there is no uh, difference between Mohammed Buhari and Mohammed Buhari. That's a minute. Mohammed Buhari are no different. But I'm telling you why people have lost faith in that. You have Mohammed Buhari, mean, uh, Muhammad Buhari, they are one and the same. How can you tell me they are one and the same? In Kotaria. The they said no, just, but one was allocated. In Kotaria. <laughs> let's, let's look at, you know, uh, the fact mm, that you that have uh, Atiku approaching the tribunal, asking that he should be declared a winner or order a rerun. The same thing, you know, with the Labour uh, presidential candidate, Peter Obi, who's also asking. Which, I mean, is, which is their right. Which is their right. Well, it, it's their right. But I, I want you to look at this now. If you remember the story in the Bible, where these women were involved with, you know, a child, and one said, kill the child. The other one said, don't kill the child. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at this now, who's reporting? If it, who's actually, if it really this? happened, though, yeah. Well, so I'm saying, no, you, we don't have to say that because it actually did happen. So in this case now, who do you yeah, think? You there. Uh, so who do you think is telling the truth? Why are we in this space, and what exactly is going to become of the tribunal? Uh, you know, in the next. And that, that is the work of the judiciary. That based on facts before it, you should be able to discern who actually won. <laughs> that is that is why you're free. Discernment is such a strong lie. word now. But, are they going to be very spiritual? You know, that's a very strong word. If you don't know, if you don't know, no, no, you look at the facts. It's simple. It's like your kids running up to you. I know you, I know, I know you don't have this. But I'll tell you, you know, your kids running up to you, if you don't know, your kids running up to you and telling you different things. You are not there. When they, uh, they fought, you are not there. When they started the quarrel, you don't even know. But based on what they say to you, you pass a judgment based on what they say to you. So in this one, and you are not even schooled in legal profession. Then not to talk of the lawyer who is trained and who has risen to the point of Supreme Court justice, although most of them also being justices of the court. But they've risen to that point. So it is presumed that they have been well thought. And you know, you go on causes, you go on this, you go on that. So it is presumed that they must have been well thought. Just like the police carrying out an investigation, the DSS carrying out an investigation. You've been taught, given certain thoughts and given certain tools. You've gone under that, you uh, gone through that tutelage. So, right. definitely, you should be able to discern. That is why what they always attribute to um, Oputa, well, one of the finest minds in the legal profession. Hmm. That's why when they said, Oputa said, uh, the, the Supreme Court is infallible, not because it is always right. It is always right. No, it is. It is it, it is. it is always. Yeah, you follow because it is final. It was actually Justice uh, Roberts who said that of the American judiciary. Very interesting. So, Very interesting. Not, 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 yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so, 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 but and so you cannot say there is no miscarriage of justice. Right. In, so, because you are all human Thank days. you. But then it should not be intentional. That is what we are talking about. Thank you, Mr. Nkuta. We, we, we will have another forum. Yes, we'll create, uh, yeah, create yes, time yes. this week uh, or next week to, to trash this. We'll have all the statistics, all the data, you know, and we'll look at it one by one. Okay, one by one with you. I promise you that. Mr. Nkuta, open up on Nkuta. Thank you very much for your time. He's a political analyst. I'm really sorry for... for not at all, not at all. You, you, you made it work for us. We appreciate, despite the, the, uh, the, the issues of the day, you still came up 
on video link. Thank looking you. Thank you. Beautiful and handsome faces. I'm telling you, I, you. I, I'm just here looking at beautiful and handsome faces too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Epona Boy No, don't look at our face. Look at my own. Don't look. Uh, well, well, we'll we'll talk about that off 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 camera in camera in camera. Thank you very much, Epona Boy right. Um, I don't know. Right. I hope that your house you've not been given a 48 hour. You know, uh, quit notice by your the landlord of River State. Yes, so PK, just like he's done to AIT. Because, because, because he has, he has, okay, he has two more months, quit notice. And that's why he's not, I want to give everybody. No, he has, he has four more years. He has four more years. He has four more years. Well, Thank you very go. much. Thank oh, you very much. And he even said so. He even said so. Yes, oh, wow. Well, after one year, we shall see after one year. To discuss this again. Yes. <laughs> All right, we have to go. Thank you very much for your time. We'll be back after right. the short break Take to care. talk about the new monetary policy uh, rates as the interest rates stay with us.